Um, this uh, was originally written on October 11th, 2009, which at once seems like a very long time ago and not very long at all. I'm 40, by the way, everybody. Which is, I know, right? It's just, it's just, it's weird. It means that, with, uh, like, uh, I'm a boy, and that means that I like stuff that catches on fire, and I like knives, and I like things that blow up, um, and uh, I have managed to not kill myself. <laughs> So I guess so, right? I live in a little hamster ball of awesome. <laughs> I just roll it through the world. Watch out for the acid So, so I roll through the world, and shit just blow it up everywhere. <laughs> Leaving just a path of devastation and misery behind me. But I don't care, I'm in the awesome ball. Watch out for the acid So this is called Gaming Monkey. Um, uh, while, my wife and, uh, while my wife Anne and I drove down the freeway today, the song Just Like Heaven came on the radio. This was my first CD, I said. I know, she said. You tell me that every time we hear a song. <laughs> the album, by the way, is Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me by The Cure. It's quite good. <laughs> and one day, you'll hear it, and I won't be here for some reason or another, and you'll wish I was here to tell you that. <laughs> While we both pondered the macabre nature of that particular thought, I realized that not only was this album forever linked to my first CD player, but it also gave me these hyper-nostalgic memories of gaming with my group of friends in high school. I don't know what it is, I said, but lately, I've wanted to get together with a bunch of nerds and do a weekend of serious non-stop gaming. She glanced over at me. Oh. Yes, but this is more than the usual semi-constant, I want to play Car Wars thing. <laughs> this is a very serious... I paused and searched for the exact word to describe the overwhelming longing, approaching psychophysical need to play, and I settled on Jones. <laughs> this is a serious Jones, like, like an addict, you know? I wiggled around in my seat and I faced her. She was driving, by the way. <laughs> it turns out the awesome hamster ball is not enough to protect you when you're driving. <laughs> so seriously, put your fucking phone away. <laughs> I wiggled around in my seat and I faced her. It's like there's... Hey, aren't we going on the 110? <laughs> Whoops, she said as she quickly changed lanes. <laughs> it's like there's a monkey on my back. Like a gaming monkey. And he's just rattling dice in my ear. <laughs> like he's shaking them in a Yahtzee cup, she said. <laughs> Gamers don't use Yahtzee cups. <laughs> I said as patiently as I could. <laughs> it's more like he's holding a bag of dice in his hand. I held my hand up and I felt the invisible bag. <laughs> and he's just rattling the dice. <laughs> Is it your bag of dice? <laughs> yes! It's totally my bag of dice. I paused for a moment and added, but he's not opening it. Because if that monkey opens the bag and touches my dice, I will fucking kill that monkey. <laughs> True story, folks. True story. Let me just page up to the next thing. I forgot to make an important announcement at the beginning of uh, our hour of awesome together today. Um, if you, you are encouraged, you are welcome. You, uh, you uh, would be uh, delighted if uh, you did the following. You can record this uh, hour. You can take pictures. You can make audio and video recordings. Uh, because this is released under Creative Commons license. It's the Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike license. Uh, um, so, if you 
you don't know what that means, find, uh, ask the person sitting next to you, and they will tell you. Uh, but please, if you are recording this, make sure that your recording of this does not interfere with the ability of the people around you to enjoy as much of the awesome uh, that we can possibly throw off the stage. Not gonna make a Peter North joke. Uh, this was originally written, you're welcome. Uh, this was originally written on November 10th, 2009. 2009 apparently was a uh, rather big year for me writing about gaming related things. And um, it is called, in place of a title, imagine Rick Ocasek walking around on the surface of a pool. In 1993, while killing time between appointments, I wandered into a game shop in the San Fernando Valley. I looked around the aisles, thumbed through the RPG books, talked myself into and then out of buying a ton of unpainted lead figures, and eventually found myself in a conversation with the owner. He picked up a deck of cards and asked me if I'd heard about this new game called Magic. Now, I was a fairly serious war gamer. I had numerous Chaos and Space Marine armies, yeah. Terminator Squad, as well as a folder that was bulging with maps and vehicles for Car Wars over a couple of homebrew miniature games. Card games were so beneath me, I don't think I even tried to hide my geek snort. You know the one. He had obviously spent time dealing with annoying nerds like me, being a game shop owner and all, and he patiently deflected my contempt as he opened the box and showed me the cards inside. Over the next 10 or 15 minutes, he showed me how this wasn't just a card game, but was actually a beautifully illustrated representation of two powerful wizards using primal and astral energies to duel with each other. By the end of his demo, I was sufficiently intrigued, and I bought two decks. I played the game a few times, but it didn't capture my imagination like the board games and role-playing games I loved. The mechanics were interesting, but I had a hard time wrapping my head around advanced concepts like tapping and, and the mysterious upkeep. Perhaps I was not the high-level gamer I thought I was. I went back to that shop a few weeks later. It must have been near a casting office. And I ended up talking to the owner about playing Magic. It's okay, I said but I'm just not that into it. He reached behind the counter and he pulled out a long box. Maybe you'd like the game better if you had access to all the cards. <laughs> that box has one of every card in the whole game? Yes, it's $80. <laughs> Dude, there is no way I'm spending $80. I know, it is amazing that I managed to live this long. Flash forward about a year. I am a guest on a Star Trek cruise, and there's a dealer's room on board. One of the dealers sells magic cards. I'm looking at them, wondering if this game ever caught on, or if this was old stock he was just burning through. A fellow nerd sees me looking at the cards and tells me that he ran magic games every week. He asks me if I would be interested in playing with him. $20, a starter deck, and a couple of boosters later, we duel. Flash forward to a few hours later. It turned out that playing with someone who actually knew what magic was and how the game worked made it a lot of fun to play. It turned out there was a lot more to the game than just dueling, too. There was deck building, and deck building had strategy to it. I bought everything that dealer had on the ship. I spent more than $80. And I spent more time playing magic with this guy and his wife than I did looking at the Alaskan coastline. I don't remember that guy's name but I can thank and blame him for making me fall in love with Magic the Gathering. <laughs>